Okay, I'm gonna show you today how if you have an average quality cell phone, you can actually capture bullets in flight on the video mode. I'm gonna show you how to do it safely and how to actually do it because even though your phone is capable of it, it, it takes there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Now I learned this from the Wild Snapper channel. I, I think that's the name of it. Uh, the guy's into black powder stuff. And he first he did the first video where I seen this shot on a phone. I talked to him about it and I've done it a few times. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now I have two cell phones set up over here because part of the problem is you don't always capture it. Because when you, what you do is you go in, I'd show you on the phone, but you're not gonna be able to see it in this bright light anyway, so I'm just gonna tell you. Real quick how you do this, you hit your record, your camera mode, hit video, more, and you're looking for super slow-mo, not slow-mo, super slow-mo, okay? And then this little symbol right here turns the box on and off. You definitely want the box. You can move it around, you can place it where you want to. Wherever that is, when movement comes into the box, then the camera will record for one second maximum. Okay, so I'll, I'll demonstrate. I'm turning the camera on. There's the box. The box is in the same place. And as, as I move my hand through, okay, there it's recording. And it's processing. Now let's watch the video. Right there. See, that's the super slow-mo. Okay, so that's how you do it. Pretty pretty easy in principle, but to actually capture a bullet in flight is tricky. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You wanna use it, you wanna mount your phone on a tripod. You can get these cell phone attachments on, on uh, Amazon, I'm sure, as well as a tripod. Uh, and of course, don't have anyone downrange operating your phone. You know, they could turn it on, but then they need to get out of the way completely back behind you before you fire. So that's how it's done. You hit that, it gives you a little square, okay? And what happens is when there's any movement in the square, then the, t the camera films in super slow-mo, which is like a thousand frames a second or 900 and some. And it does it for one second, maybe a little bit less. I'm not sure, but it's not more than, than uh, a second. So all that movement from the beginning of the movement to when it stops filming is one second. So you gotta do something really fast right there. So you, what you have to do is you have to set up your cameras. And those two cameras, they're, they're projecting the square that starts on the edge of my tripod here and goes over the camera. So. I can, it's approximate though. That's the other thing I learned. That square isn't exactly where it says. It's, it's kind of a fuzzy line, okay? So I'm gonna set the cameras, turn them on, sneak back over here, and as I get into that box, what I learned is you can, you can go into that box really, really slowly, and then when you make a sudden movement, then, the, then that one second begins. And it's kind of a touchy deal. When you're up real close, uh, the, the, the sensor inside the box or whatever that senses you going in the box is really uh, in a, like a touchy mode and the slightest movement it'll go. And as you back up, it takes a more dramatic movement. So we're gonna start off with something simple. I'm gonna film from back here. Let me go get those cameras turned on and then we'll do it. I gotta sneak up on that thing real slow as I get closer. Cause as you walk into that frame, it should be where the tripod is. So bear with me here. Kind of a lousy shot, but we'll see if the camera's picked it up anyway. I know, I, I can tell I recorded something. It might have been me walking up there. I'll try it again. One thing you, you gotta have, I don't know if I mentioned this before, you gotta have bright sunlight to do this. And all this snow, is reflecting that light all around so it's ideal conditions to capture the bullet in flight the other thing is you want to put your cameras on the side so that bullet is moving like this the light is shining on the bullet and the cameras can see the bullet then if you put the cameras on the other side then the, the bullet's kind of in shadow so it's really important bright sunlight and you got to have the cameras so they're seeing the side of the bullet that has the light on it all right i'm gonna try it again
Okay, we're set up to do something a little bit, a little bit uh, different than before. I'm going to draw the gun, not going fast. I'm going to slow draw it. I'm going to try to shoot the block twice really quickly on, on a, a, a double shot technique. I'm not trying to do this as a shooting feed. I just want to show it to the slow mo camera. So I'm going to be really close. Two bullets in there anyway. So I mean, the shot was good. I hope the slow mo picked it up. Okay, now I'm gonna switch up to shooting black powder live ammo, and we're gonna we're gonna hit that block with a with a 200 grain bullet, doing about 800 feet a second. I'm gonna get the cameras going now. It would be nice to have an assistant, but if you did use an assistant, make sure they get completely out, out of the downrange area. Okay, so they're both set to go off when I enter that box. Put my reading glasses away. All right, I'm gonna do some fast draw on this. didn't make it. I know my, my shadow just crossed the target. We'll see. Gotta move really slow in here. <coughs> piece of wood came down. Well, I hit the target. Again, this isn't a shooting feat. The hard part's running the cameras. We're making the shooting easy. If you made the shooting hard, you'd really be screwed. Okay, so we're gonna try a double shot with black powder live ammo, stock hammer. Gonna to have to hit the, st the stock hammer twice. It's harder to hit than a fanning hammer. Learn something about these cameras. You can move the box around with your finger. I didn't know that. So that I, I was trying to aim the camera to get the box around. You can just move the box around. So we're gonna to try to get this to go again. So as you can see, it's a bit of a hassle, but it does work. And I think it's particularly hard using two cameras because I'm, and I don't know if the temperature has something to do, it's pretty cold out here today. Uh, because I start one camera, get it set up, start the other camera, start this camera, I go back, the first camera shut off. If I don't get going with it, it, it keeps turning off. So it's easier to do with one camera. I did two cameras because you know, I'm trying to do all this in one shot and get it done, capture something, you know. It's hard to capture something. You know, a lot of times it'll just barely miss it. You know, where you, you move too fast and then the slow motion happens after you or before you shoot or vice versa, you know. But anyway, so the principles to do this right, lots of bright sunlight, have the light shining on the bullet itself. All right. So in this case, it's it's coming on the left side of my body and the gun and the bullet. Um, if it was later on in the day or somewhere else, someone's over here, then I put the camera on this side. So so show the camera the light reflected off the object that you want to film and um the other thing is the closer you are the slower you got to move when you sneak up on that little square box and the farther back you are the more dramatic you are i've done some some shots where i'm way back there and i pull up and shoot and it doesn't capture the movement because i'm too far away so i have to wave my hand or something and then shoot you know so uh you just if, as you work with it you'll 
figure that out. But be safe about it. Of course, follow all safety or firearm safety rules when you do this kind of thing. Don't put your friend down there and tell him to push the button. You know, you, I did this all by myself without an assistant. I did put my camera to a little bit of risk, but I didn't put any person to risk, you know, so that's important. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.